Hello friends. Today I will discuss the loss of illumination. So in loss of illumination there are basically two types of loss are available. One is inverse square law, the other is Lambert's cosine law. So there is a, another law called cos cubed law. So let me discuss first the inverse square law. So here we assume a point uh, light source like this and let us say a surface is there normal to the rays coming from the light source and it is at a distance of d like this. This is the screen to be illuminated and this is the light and the distance between the light and the surface is d. Let the light source have the luminous intensity capital I then the inverse square law says the illumination received by the surface is directly proportional to the luminous intensity of the light, light source and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the light source and the surface area to be illuminated. So we can write the illumination received by the surface which is at a distance cap, uh, d is written as like this E is equal to I by d square. This E is directly proportional to luminous intensity I and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the light source and the surface area. Since the light source uh, luminous intensity do not change so we can write this equation like this. Luminous intensity I is equal to E into d square. So this law we can extend for different surfaces which are at different distances from the light source. So let us say this is the light source and the light is coming like this. Let us say this is the first screen or first surface area which is at a distance d1. This is the second surface area which is at a distance d2 from the source and let this is the distance of surface 3 from source. So if we apply the screen 1 and screen 2 that is surface area of 1 and surface area of 2 then we can write this luminous intensity equation like this i is equal to e1 d1 square e2 d2 is equal to e2 d2 square where this e1 is the illumination received by the screen 1 or surface 1 e2 is the illumination received by the second surface area and E3 is the illumination received by the surface area 3. So since we are considering here only two areas, this and this, so we can write luminous intensity of the light source is equal to E1 D1 square is equal to E2 D2 square. Next, coming to the next law of illumination that is Lambert's cosine law. So when do we use this Lambert's cosine law? This is used when the light source emanating the light at certain angle instead of perpendicular to the surface. In that case to find the illumination at a point on the surface then we follow the Lambert's cosine law. So let us say AB is the screen to be illuminated or area to be illuminated and the light source mounting height from the ground from point A is H and the distance between the light source and the point B on the surface is D. 
So to get the illumination at point B, we use this Lambert's cosine law. What this Lambert's cosine law says is, the illumination produced or received by the surface by a point source of light is proportional to the cosine of angle of incidence that is this. This is the theta angle with, uh, made with respect to this. So, we can say the illumination as per Lambert's cosine law at a point B on the surface which has an angle of uh, incidence theta, we can say the illumination at point B is directly proportional to the luminous intensity and the cos of the angle of incidence and inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source to the point B. So we can write E is equal to I cos theta divided by D square. So this D is always is to be remembered that it is the distance between the light source and the point under consideration on the surface. And H is the direct height or the minimum height or the mounting height from the ground So next, cos cube theta law. So it is nothing but extension of the Lambert's cosine law. So just now we know Lambert's cosine law says illumination at point B is equal to I cos theta divided by D square. And from this triangle, we can say cos theta is nothing but h by d cos theta is equal to h by d so now we substitute instead of cos theta this h by d then we get e is equal to i by d square into h by d now we multiply both numerator and denominator with h square like this. Then rearrange the terms. Then we get the i divided by h square. Then h cube divided by d cube. Now we can rearrange these terms further like this. i by h square into h by d whole cube. And you can see this h by d is nothing but cos theta. So we can write this h by d whole cube as cos cube theta. So we can write this e is equal to i by h square into cos cube theta. So we have seen here in the cos cube theta to find the illumination at any point on the surface. If you know the angle made by the line joining the point with the surface with the vertical line then we can find the illumination simply just by knowing the mounting height of the light that is h so we can calculate e is equal to i by h square cos cube theta so let us uh, summarize once again as per in inverse square law the illumination is directly proportional to the luminous intensity and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the light source and the surface area to be illuminated. Whereas in case of Lambert's cosine law, to know the illumination at a point on the surface which is not directly below the source. So we can calculate the illumination at any point on the surface by using the Lambert's cosine law that is 
i by d square into cos theta. So here d is the actual distance between the light source and the surface. Coming to the cos cube theta, this is the easiest method. If we just we know the the mounting height and the luminous intensity of the light source and if we know the angle of incidence of the point with the light source on the source on the surface then we can simply calculate i by h square cos cube theta as the illumination at the given point on the surface. Please like the video, share the video and subscribe to the channel.